Inhalation anesthetics are used for induction and maintenance of general anesthesia in the operating room. In this video, we will discuss the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of inhalational agents. A brief history first. The use of inhalation anesthetics began in the 1840s, with the introduction of ether in 1846, chloroform in 1847, and nitrous oxide in 1844. However, safety concerns quickly emerged, prompting the search for safer and more effective agents. This led to the development of fluorinated ethers and hydrocarbons as the primary focus of research. Over time, agents like halothane and enflurane, once widely used, have been largely replaced by modern inhalation anesthetics. Today, fluorinated ethers such as isoflurane, sevoflurane, and desflurane, along with nitrous oxide, are standard in practice. Xenon, a noble gas with remarkable anesthetic properties, remains limited in use due to high production costs. These advancements have significantly enhanced the safety, reliability, and versatility of general anesthesia. The exact mechanism of action for inhaled anesthetics remains mostly unknown. However, it has been explored through two main theoretical frameworks, the lipid-based theory and the protein-based theory. The lipid-based theory is rooted in the Meyer-Overton rule, which highlights a strong correlation between the lipid solubility of anesthetics and their potency. This observation led to the hypothesis that anesthetics exert their effects by acting on the lipid bilayer of neuronal membranes and altering its physical properties. One key aspect of this theory is the idea that anesthetics dissolve into the lipid bilayer, causing expansion or increased fluidity. These changes disrupt the normal functioning of membrane-embedded proteins, which impairs ion flow and neuronal signaling. The theory was further refined with the introduction of the critical volume theory, which proposes that a critical amount of expansion in the lipid bilayer is necessary to induce anesthesia. The protein-based theory suggests that anesthetics act by binding to and modulating ion channels and receptors in the central nervous system. Key targets include GABA receptors, where anesthetics enhance inhibitory neurotransmission, and NMDA receptors which they block to inhibit excitatory signals. Potassium channels, such as K2P, are also stabilized reducing neuronal excitability. Additional targets include glycine receptors and voltage-gated ion channels, collectively producing the anesthetic effect. Recent research has shown that the two theories are not mutually exclusive. Instead, they represent complementary mechanisms. The mechanisms of action of inhalation anesthetics can also be viewed on different levels. These are macroscopic, affecting the brain and spinal cord. Microscopic targeting synapses and axons, and molecular influencing pre- and postsynaptic membranes. At the spinal cord level, inhalation anesthetics decrease transmission of noxious afferent information ascending from the spinal cord to the cerebral cortex via the thalamus. There is also inhibition of spinal efferent neuronal activity reducing movement response to pain. Hypnosis and amnesia are mediated at the supraspinal level. Tomographic assessment of regional uptake of glucose in anesthetized volunteers indicates that the thalamus and midbrain reticular formations are more depressed than other regions. The actions of inhalation agents on ion channels of neuronal tissue can influence either the presynaptic release of neurotransmitters, alter the postsynaptic response threshold to neurotransmitters, or both. Inhaled anesthetics are believed to inhibit excitatory presynaptic channel activity mediated by neuronal nicotinic, serotonergic, and glutaminergic receptors, while also augmenting the inhibitory postsynaptic channel activity mediated by GABA and glycine receptors. The combined effect is to reduce neuronal and synaptic transmission. It should be noted that, 
This video just outlines the ways in which anesthetics work and the detailed explanation of how the synaptic transmission occur is beyond the scope of this video. At molecular level, general anesthetics act on specific targets in the central nervous system like the alpha subunits of the GABA-A receptor. By prolonging GABA-mediated chloride currents, inhalation anesthetics enhance chloride conductance causing hyperpolarization and reducing postsynaptic neuronal excitability. Another important channel involved are the two poor domain potassium channels. They are a family of background or leak potassium channels that help regulate the resting membrane potential and neuronal excitability. Inhalational anesthetics have been shown experimentally to enhance the activity of these channels, leading to hyperpolarization of the plasma membrane. Again, the detailed explanation of these receptor and channels are beyond the scope of this video.